Welcome back. In the last video, I explained how control modules work. And I explained that there's three circuits that are generally hooked up to a control module. You need the data circuit, which is the same SLC that's hooked up to all the devices on the loop, smoke detectors, pulse stations, etc. You need an auxiliary power source, which is usually just 24 volts. And that 24 volts is sitting at terminals 10 and 11 um, at all times, waiting to be passed through to terminal 6 and 7. And terminal 6 and 7 are what um, that's what's the, 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 the circuits you're controlling or the devices you're controlling, I should say, like the horn strobes or strobes, that's what's connected to terminals 6 and 7. So that voltage is sitting, that 24 volts is sitting at terminals 10 and 11, waiting to be passed through to 6 and 7. And when, through programming, you, you basically tell the control module when to turn on and when to pass that voltage to terminal 6 and 7. Um, so I explained that in the last video. If that doesn't make sense, go ahead and go back and watch that one. And again, these are, these are specific to, um, you know, notif basically the system sensor type devices, notifier, firelight, um, silent night, etc. In some cases, game, game well. Um, uh, but now I want to talk about um, if this were a voice system. So let's say it was a high rise or a certain type of occupancy that required a voice system or audio messages to be played over you know, as, as the evacuation message. So sometimes you don't just want the horns to go off like you'd see in most schools. Um, sometimes you want an evacuation message or you want the fire department to be able to talk over a microphone to the occupants of the building and direct them, give them specific instructions on what to do in the event of a fire. So in order to understand how that works, you need to understand some basics about um, audio in general. And I'll try to do um, my best at explaining that. So this is a drawing of an ugly guy talking into a microphone. The microphone's connected to a mixer, which is a powered mixer, which uh, that's not really important, but I'll explain that in a second why, why I specify that. And then uh, connected to some speakers. So. When this guy talks, he is pushing airwaves. Um, and then the microphone is a type of transducer. What it does is it has a diaphragm. Well, there's two different types of microphones, but that's not really important. There's a diaphragm, there's a diaphragm in there that senses the air pressure. So he's essentially creating air pressure waves. The microphone transduces that signal from the... I should have looked this up so I could be using the right terminology, but basically it's, 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 it's creating an electrical pulse or elect, an electrical frequency that is exactly related to the air pressure. So every time this little diaphragm moves, it's creating a pulse. There's two different types of microphones that can, but we're not, like I said, we're not going to get into that. Um, so that's a very, very low level signal. Um, and it, it's just little tiny pulses that go through this wire and it goes into this mixer. Um, for fire alarm purposes, there's no mixer, but there is a preamp. So that signal is very minimal. There's just like little spikes with every time he's talking. And then this thing amplifies it up to a line level, which is basically line level would be on your phone or your MP3 player. You could hook headphones right up to a line level and that's basically as loud as your device will get. That's as loud as line level would get. Now, if you want it to be heard uh, at levels greater than that, that's when you would need an amplifier that's actually going to boost that signal to a level that people could hear. So now this is going to boost the signal. It's going to pass it out to these. It's going to boost the signal, pass it out to these speakers, which are another transducer. And these speakers are going to then take that electrical pulse, and they have big cones on them that 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 transduce that back from an electrical signal into air pressure waves. So those cones are actually pushing the air at I'm not sure again what terminology to use here, but they're pushing they're they're pushing the air um, at a um, a level equal to the frequency the electrical frequency. So I know that was kind of an awkward description of it, but but basically you can't just have 24 volts going to a speaker. You're just going to get some constant hum, right? You need a you need a change in pressure. You need a change in frequency. So you can use control. The reason I'm explaining this is because in a voice system, you. You still use the same control modules to feed speakers. Now this drawing looks the same as the beginning as the drawing at the beginning of the last video I did. Um, but just imagine that these are no longer horn strobes. Imagine that these are now speaker strobes. Um, 
if they're combination devices that have both speakers and strobes, you're going to need two different circuits because the strobes just use 24 volts. The speakers need an amplified signal. So maybe your voice system has an audio message stored in it that's going to play whenever there's an alarm. If that's the case, or whether it's that or it's just a microphone like a manual evacuation system, usually it's some combination of both, that message has to be played through these speakers. So everything would be hooked up the same to this control module. You would still have, um, you'd have your SLC going in on the right here. And you would have, instead of, and then you would have the circuit connected to each speaker. Now this is a speaker circuit, not the strobe circuit. Go to here. So everything on this side would be would be connected exactly the same. I'm going to switch to the pen. I think it's faster. And you still have an end of line resistor. And when your panel is clear, when this control module is not on, you know, through programming, it's not being told to be turned on, it works the same way. You have your data is actually what's that power essentially is what's is what's going flowing through the circuit through the inline resistor and, and telling you that this module is clear now the difference is instead of having 24 volt power going into terminals 11 and 10 you're going to have an amplified signal so this is my drawing of what an analog amplifier generally looks like and I should have done some research on this before I started making this because I don't remember which side is the input and which side is the output. But basically, there's going to be a whole other component to this system that's not being drawn right now. Um, but think of this like the mixer, like the powered mixer in the last in the last uh, frame that I showed. Um, you're going to have you're going to have a whole voice system that's connected to the input. I think the left side is the input, the low level, so the line level that I talked about. Let's say there was a microphone with the the, the newer product for notifiers called a DV, DVC, which is a digital voice command, I believe it stands for. Um, now that's kind of an awkward way to start this because the digital amplifiers work a little bit differently. I'm describing an analog system, but they make an analog output converter that basically makes all this stuff analog. Now if that terminology is confusing to you, don't be intimidated by it. I'm sure at some point I'll make videos describing the difference between digital and, and analog. But basically an analog is the type of system that I described above where the microphone transduces air pressure waves into electrical energy and then the amplifier amplifies that so it's at line level. So in this instance the line level would be on the left side. It goes through the amplifier and on the output of the amplifier, that's what goes to all your control modules. So, so now this is an amplified signal that's sitting here waiting for the control module to pass it through to the speakers. Oops, that didn't work. So generally, there'd be no signal. I mean, this, this system is the worst. All right, generally, there would be no voltage or any kind of power on these terminals because nobody would be talking or that message wouldn't be playing. But once somebody pulls a pull station and the voice system starts um, generating, it may not, it, it, that, that amplified signal is going to go to all of the control modules. But through programming, maybe you don't have the control module turned on. So if somebody were to pick up the microphone on a manual evacuation system and start talking, the amplifier would amplify that signal and it would go to the control module but again through programming maybe that control module is not turned on so there's a couple different components it works generally the same way as the strobes it's just the important thing that I want you to take away from this is there's a different input to the control module than in the strobe or horn strobe scenario so you would need, if, if this were a horn strobe, I mean, I'm sorry, if this were a speaker strobe, you're going to need two control modules. One of them for the speaker that has the amplifier input, and the other one for a strobe, and then that circuit would go to the strobe. And on the back of this, there'd be two terminals. There'd be a, um, you know, strobe terminal and a speaker terminal. So I know that was a little bit confusing, and I'm sure I'll do a lot more videos on voice and, and kind of give you a, a little bit better big picture view. Um, but looking at the time, this is where I'm going to stop this one.